these parts. All right. So yeah, everybody can see it. Good, good, good. So um, yeah, thanks. Uh, I'm I'm Jonathan at the University of Shizuoka. If you want to get in touch with me, my mail's right at the top, um, and I shared that document in the chat. So um, if you need to leave early, you can you can use the document to look at things. Um, yeah, uh, I'm just going to try to skip, I'm just going to skim through this document a little bit. I'm going to this is just the abstract that was shared with everybody. I'm going to talk about games a little bit. I'm going to talk about research if you are interested in it. I will talk a little bit about the type of teaching I do in my context and try to persuade you to try it as well, the pedagogy of multiliteracies. I'm going to try to give you as many takeaways as possible. Uh, I'm going to try to steer you away from pitfalls that I fell into, and you're very welcome to ask questions anytime. Um, I, I can't see Zoom right now, so if, if you just want to turn your mic on and ask a question, or I'll, 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 I'll tab back and forth to the chat every once in a while. So, um, <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad a lot of people's passions is gra graphic design. Um, yeah, on, on the second page, uh, there's just a ton of links. Um, I have been using games and doing research for a while, and I just dumped things. I'm not going to go through all of these, but if you, this is this is where I teach the game Tiraquea. Um, this is a, a workbook that I use with my students. This is a journal that I co-edit with James York, who's in the chat. We have an open Discord if you're interested. I've given talks um, at conferences. And there are videos up on YouTube. I've written papers on teaching with games, um, lots of different methodologies using uh, Monopoly, research overviews. Uh, we just had a paper published in Foreign Language Annals that's, I think, really provocative and interesting. Um, uh, we've talked about methods, materials, and mediation, uh, talked about students. I've used games in intact classes at the university, and I've done sort of like a, a research deep dive. So um, but there's a lot of stuff in there. Um, and that's, yeah, literally like the past five to 10 years of my life is just right here. So, um, take a look if, if you're interested. Um, I do want to direct you before I start. Um, so James is in the chat. Um, James is a prof at Meiji University, and he's also doing really interesting things with games, um, in, in parallel to, but also, um, distinct from things that I'm doing. Uh, he just gave a wonderful workshop. It's up on YouTube, and, and definitely check out his site as well. Um, and then for, for teachers who are looking for materials, uh, I put in just a bunch of links to things that I've used in my classes. They're, they're all Google documents. You can, you can make a copy of it. You can remix it for your own context. Um, this is a, a magazine that I've used just for one day or for an entire semester. Here's an entire semester. Here's a two-year uh, thesis workbook. Um, here's a, a mini lesson on games, um, participation projects, uh, worksheets for connecting students' goals and games. I'm going to be talking a lot about goals today. Um, how to discuss games, checklist for playing new games, how to analyze texts, like if you've got a rule book or uh, you pull a tweet off the internet, um, you can do that. Um, how to think about participation, researching games, all this kind of stuff. Uh, I'm not really going to talk through all of these things, but if, if something sounds interesting, um, it, it's all there for you to take and remix and, and ask me questions about if things don't make sense. Okay. Um, but so I'm, as I said, I'm going to sort of go through those different, um, I'm prepared to talk about these different areas. Um, I'm sort of a suit, like half academic talk, half Here's stuff for your classroom talk. Um, but I think just you, know, you showed up because you're interested in games and language teaching. So before I start with anything, and I'd be happy just to stay on this page, um, what, what do you want out of this session? Uh, are you looking for something? Are you trying to do something in your class that, that you need some help with? How can I help you? Uh, I, I'm very happy just to stay here and field questions or connect people or, or do whatever I, I can do to help you. If you want to turn your mic on now or, uh, okay, hold on. Yeah, I'm in the chat now. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Of course. Um, I can look in the chat. Uh, people can turn their mic on. If, if you're like, hey, I really need a game or um, how do I do this? Or 
how can I get published? Like, does anybody have a, a question before I start? Jonathan, just a basic question, but yeah, of course, uh, I'm, of course. I'm just starting to kind of learn more about game learning. Can you differentiate um, between gamification and game learning? <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, 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 no. I, I think it, I, it's something that I, I was going to touch on a little bit. Um, so game-based learning, I would say, is using games in your classroom. If you're bringing in Monopoly, if you're playing 20 Questions, if you're playing Simon Says, if you're playing Minecraft, um, if you're playing uh, Rock, Paper, Scissors, if you're using a game, it's game-based learning. Right? So um, gamification, I think, is a really hot topic. Some people do talk about gamification as being game-based learning and gamification and game-based learning as being gamification. Gamification is already what most people are doing in the classrooms, using points, using badges, using leaderboards. Um, I think it's a really controlling device for students. Um, it's based in marketing. It's based in coupon programs. It's based in frequent flyer miles. Um, it's based in Starbucks points. I, I went to Starbucks today. I got some points. I, I, I was gamified today. Um, I, I'm, yeah, James has written an incredible paper on gamification and game-based learning. Yeah, we sure. Um, James pretty much wrote it. But um, if you really have students who do not want to study, if they do not want to engage in, in, in a, a lecture or a grammar exercise, maybe you might need to gamify it, right? You get, I've done it before, right? You get 15 extra points if you do this. Um, I wouldn't recommend it because it's really behavioristic, it's controlling, it's it's going to be if if you want to use gamification methods, you need to keep using gamification methods, right? Because people get addicted to points, so they're going to hunt for points and look for points in your class. So, um, is that enough rambling? Is that enough differentiation, Namiko? No, that's good. And actually, one question that I had in one of the biggest fears that I have in any classroom is one one game was mentioned, and it's actually a game that a lot of kids play, uh, maybe abroad. But it's a number game where basically you're shooting monsters, but through that you're supposed to learn sure. how to uh, calculate. However, sure. uh, what sure, they sure. discovered was that actually they ended up hating math. So how do we, you know, design a game that you know doesn't promote <laughs> disliking, you know, the very subject that we're trying to reinforce or the skill? Wow, you, you want to do it? So you want to do it? You want to do a PhD in educational game design? That's what it sounds <laughs> no, like. That's great. No, 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 no. So like, I, I mean, if you, uh, the shorthand, like thirty-second answer, elevator pitch mm -hmm. is to think about how the students are going to use, let's say, numbers in this case, right? Like, right. how how do people use numbers? Okay, well, we use numbers when we go shopping. Well, then let's do a shopping role play, or let's actually go to a, a, a store. Right. Um, and does it even need to be a game then? Right. 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 I okay. think I'm going to talk about role plays a little bit today. Oh, There's right. nothing. Right. 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 So, like, I think a role play. Thanks, James. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think a role play is a really nice way to integrate some some game mechanics, like the the immersion and interactivity, with that real world content. I think role plays you can't really go wrong with them. Um, and and I've I've done research on it too. So. If you, if you want to talk about that later. Um, Michelle asks, what's the easiest tool to use in making an interactive digital game? Um, well, uh, let's see, you can you could use Twine if you wanted to use um, like the interactive storytelling, right? Like you, 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 you walk up to the house and you, you hear a noise. Do you go around the left or the right? You can use Twine. Um, I've, <laughs> I've used Mario Maker, but that's not really the easiest tool. Um, you can use RPG Maker if you want to make a digital game, right? Uh, RPG Maker. Um, let's see, what did we write about in the book, James? We've got a bunch of things that you can use for digital game design. Um, like, if again, like a role plays are really interesting. So, like starting with Twine, or even like some people will use PowerPoint because in PowerPoint you can embed like so you have a prompt, and then you can either have like uh, you're sitting seated at a table, and the, 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 there's a there's a bowl of pasta in front of you. Um, but you suspect that it might be poisoned. Do you sniff? You know, do you sniff it? Do you do you leave the table? Do you whatever? 
you can put those as, as hot spots and go to different parts on the on the PowerPoint. Um, Twine's pretty good, I think. Thank you so much. Um, but the, yeah, of course. But it's like you don't even have to. If you want to do a digital game, you can also um, start just by making an analog game. Like start by making cards. Start by making a board game, um, and then and then use that as a as a prototyping tool. Um, Cecilia asks. Too often my games are fun focused with learning side effects. I want my games to be more learning focused with a fun side effect. Wow, that's great. Um, so I'm going to talk. That's that's a big part of the talk. If I can get to it, is about what do you do with a game? Um, because I think that games should be fun or can be fun most of the time. Um, not all games are fun. There there are some pretty provocative games, but. I think that a good way to play a game is to immerse yourself in it, right? To enjoy playing Minecraft, to enjoy playing a role-playing game, to enjoy playing Snakes and Ladders. But then what you do after the game or before the game is, is where the learning comes in. So I, I could talk about Snakes and Ladders and how it's a fate-based game. You just roll the dice and you go up the ladders or down the snakes and you don't really have any control. After that's done, you can debrief your students. You can discuss that experience with your students um, how was the game? Uh, what did you like about it? How did you feel? How could we make this game better? Did you notice that? Um, uh, did you did you notice that it was completely luck driven? And so, if the it depends what games you games you choose. So for me, I do use snakes and ladders even with university students because it's a metaphor for life and it's a metaphor for fate and how much control you have and how do you feel about being controlled by someone else, right? Sort of an authoritarian. Um, uh, concept. Um, but then if you want your games to be more learning focused, there are plenty of really good learning games. And we can, we can go into those too. Like you're teaching history. There are so many good, wonderful historical simulations. Um, James, is, James and I both teach sort of international relations, economics, uh, poli-sci stuff. And there are some really wonderful, simple, like elementary school level simulations of, of how society works and how Dis historical decisions are made and things like that. So it's a, it's, a, it's a really interesting balance, I think, Cecilia, of choosing the right game with the right content or, or, or the right experience, and then what do you do with it, right? And I'm going to push and say, with my classes, I probably only play games less than 10% of the time or even 5% of the time. Most of the time, my students are discussing and asking questions and prodding and asking, you know, like, and doing research projects and, 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 and gathering it language. So uh, I, I think that's about the right um, uh, percentage. But it also all depends on what your goals are, right? If you want your students to be practicing more language, like 20 questions, maybe 20 questions doesn't need to be debriefed. 20 questions is an excellent game that's very learning focused. How do you ask good questions? What vocabulary do you need? Uh, what WH questions, yes, no questions. Does that help, Cecilia? Yeah, cool. That's great. Um, anybody else yeah. making games unfocused? Look forward to the rest of the talk. Yeah, of course. Cool. Anybody else? I think the meat is still coming. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I think in the last five minutes, we pretty much covered almost everything, right, James? Like, designing games, doing more with games. Don't gamify your classroom. If 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 that's it, then yeah, yeah. I think we, we had a pretty good we had a pretty good uh, evening. Okay. All right. Cool. I'll jump back to the the, the presentation. Then. Oh, hold on. What's the difference between? Okay. Good. Good. Uh, I just oh, took yeah. notes while you were speaking. Yeah. yeah thanks. Well, Andy is, is cool. just asked a question in chat. I don't know if you saw that one. Uh, oh, great. Are fate-based games more recommended than ones that reward linguistic knowledge, for example? It all I think, um, Wandele, like I think it all depends on the goal. Like I'm teaching university liberal arts students, and, and it's a really interesting balance between their, their, their educational background and, and who they are as people and who they want to become and the social pressures that are on them right now. And so I'm I'm really choosing games that poke at those issues, right? Like I, I play games um, with my students where, no, I, won't, I won't give that example. Um, I, I give, I won't be specific. Um, I, I ask my students to play games where they are sometimes uncomfortable, right? Where, where they're forced or pressured to do something, to make a decision. Um, 
and then that 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 emotional reaction is what I use to debrief and discuss. You know, what kind of what kind of work do you want? How, are, are, were you happy in this game? What does happiness mean to you? So for me, um, that's important for my context, for my students. I get to know my students before I'm even recommending games. They have a say in what games we're choosing. So if I recommend if I show them snakes and ladders and say, this is a really interesting game for thinking about life or the game of life, like the Jinsei game. And they say, yeah, we want to play this. Sure. That that's the one we play, right? They are on equal footing to me in terms of, uh, choosing a game because it's their life, right? If it's, if it's my choice, I'm going to play Metal Gear Solid, right? I don't, that, that's my choice, but I'm teaching them. Does that help one day? Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you. And Elizabeth asks, have you got a recommended game that you can sustain for a term or a year for vocabulary retrieval? Wow. Uh, yeah, cahoots, right? Or um, right? Or any sort of like flashcard-based system. Like uh, no Elizabeth, I think it's a game. We, whatever. Right? Like, uh, but I think it works. Like if 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 the idea is for students to memorize a thousand words. Yeah, thanks. Hi, Elizabeth. Yeah. Like, if the students need to memorize a thousand words, I think it's very hard to find a game that's going to do that. Uh, there are some, I, I think um, uh, Jason, right, in the LLP Discord is working on a digital game to, to, to retrieve and learn vocabulary and, and recycle those things. Um, I... Wow, like it's such a great question. Like if you've got a if you've got a textbook that has always pop, you know, has has vocabulary that, that you've got to introduce and, and reinforce, you could use the same thing. Like you could do use 20 questions at the end of every chapter, right? That's just gonna re, that's just gonna reinforce the vocabulary that's been done in the class. You could ask students to make a game based on the vocabulary in their chapter. That's a wonderful way to transfer transfer knowledge and transfer vocabulary. But a recommended game that you can sustain for a term or a year for vocabulary retrieval. How much freedom do you have? Like, do, would you have a year to do something big? Model United Nations. Like, if you, um, I'll type it here to everyone, right? Like, if you have that much freedom, I would, I would try to look at if, if that's what you need. Like, if you're, if you're teaching students like liberal arts, interested in the world, global citizenship, that sort of stuff a long-term role play that requires reading, writing, writing like memos and briefs, discussing things, going into subcommittees, presenting proposals. If you're going to be, re then you're of course going to be um, retrieving and using, uh, there we go, right? Anki, right? If you're looking for a really holistic game, I think Model United Nations could be really interesting. But I, does anybody else have an idea for something that long? An entire game. Okay, so can I jump in there? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so my situation, um, it's partly on me, it's partly on uh, the teachers around me. I'm teaching in a, a senior high school where the students are pressed to uh, memorize vast amounts of vocabulary that are based on test corpus. And these kids are going through retest after retest, and they're starting to lose... Uh, their momentum and their hope. Huh. Uh, yeah, so I'm trying to think of uh, a way that I could sustain over a term, a year, where I could kind of yeah. compete them against each other, uh, maybe by okay, class, yeah. by class yep. or by uh, group. People are doing that. There, there are some actually some interesting research projects out there where and James typed in Anki, Anki, right? Like any sort of like SRS, right? And a spaced repetition system. Yeah. If if you if you have an SRS and you can pit classes against each other, uh, it's really behavioristic, but it's going to get the job done. That's right. I think the kids are under pressure, and I don't want them to lose heart. Um, yep, yep. I think that if it's a short term thing, especially like, and other people can agree or disagree. Like, if it's like, okay, you this is going to be a hell year. You've got to memorize two thousand words. Yeah. This is the way we're going to do this. Is everybody on board? We're going to have like class houses we're going to compete you know room a versus room b versus room c we're going to see who can do this it would be a really interesting study it would be a really interesting project like i'd love to collaborate with you on this to 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 no seriously okay. like to talk to the students right to to see like hey we understand that you're losing motivation we we as teachers care about you 
um, a humanistic approach, I think, is is, is a, a thread that's going to go through my talk tonight, like of yeah. talking to people. Like, I understand you're having a tough time. Mm -hmm. This is an option that we can pursue. Would you like to try it for two weeks and see how it goes? Mm -hmm. How's it going? Is it not going well? Because I think that's the sort of the more democratic approach to, to, to education, where if students have, have, an, have a say, I, th I think 100% Anki would be great, for sure. Like a, like a competitive drill, quest-based, whatever it is, whatever you turn it into. Okay. Yeah. I'll approach my um, admin uh, this week, uh, next week, regarding uh, what kind of yeah. tools we have. Like, we, we can't afford to get uh, various digital tools. No, like, I think we can totally do it paper based. I mean, I was in, like, I was, I was studying French on flashcards, and, and there were flashcards at the back of the room and things like that. So I think there's an analog, a, a low cost analog solution to this, and I'd love to work on it. And Anki is free. Anki but if they, free don't have, yeah. if they don't have a smart. But if they don't have smartphones, right? That's the thing. Oh, all kids have um, tablets. Okay, then Anki, right? So yeah, the um, web version is free. Yeah, you can mail me. My my email is on the top of the document. Okay. Um, or yeah, find I'll, me I'll and mail me. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay, I'll I'll ding you and I'll I'll give you a little uh, rundown of our situation. Too. That's awesome. That'd be yeah, cool. for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Where are you? Me, me? uh, um, Chibaraki, Chita. Okay. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah, I'm at a private high school. Cool. Let's let's figure it out. Okay. Cheers. Thank you. I'll let you get awesome. back to what you're doing. Okay. Oh, I'm just reading the chat. Like, yeah. yeah. Creative writing, writing their own book. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Namiko, right? Use reusing vocabulary. Yeah. I think that could be an interesting way to, to do it alongside the Anki. I think that'd be cool. And uh, okay. quizzes. Quizzes a good competing based game. Okay. Kahoot, vary the question, make it verbal, word association games. Yeah, totally. Okay. We, we're just getting um, a, 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 an account for Kahoot that's paid for by the school. Beautiful. We're going to start learning to use that. Okay, yeah, I will message you. And yeah, cool. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Anytime. All right. Uh, let's see. You got a message from Martin. I added it to the doc. Uh, some classroom situation settings or situations where you think a game is not effective or appropriate, or do games always have a place? Oh, wow. Yeah, James and I have talked about this. Like, there are some, if you think about different contexts, like, uh, just like if the class is called academic reading, right? And the purpose is to learn how to read academic papers and learn how to read, uh, you know, newspapers. If that's the goal, I, I, I think that. Teach, giving students strategy, and we'll talk about this too, like sort of analysis, giving students strategy for reading academic texts, like, okay, this is how you make moves through the abstract. Um, this is the type of vocabulary that's used. I, there, lecture is not a bad word. And I think analysis is not a bad word. So if students are in a certain situation where lecturing, analysis, um, use of the, the first language, second language, um, uh, you know, concordancing tools are the are the best way to do it. I, I would I would be hesitant to bring in a game, in that context. Um, I think that you can be playful, and I'll talk about that in a second. I think you can be playful with your analysis of things. I think you can, um, you know, right, James, adopt that that ludic attitude, and, Indeed, and you, can, yeah. you can you can make it a light, interesting, engaged um, mood and atmosphere. Right, I teach grad. I, I teach graduate students how to give academic presentations and, and the mood in the class is always very light. Like, um, <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen like the chicken, chicken, chicken talk on, on YouTube. Um, there's a, there's a funny uh, conference where someone presented a talk and they took the entire academic paper and every word is replaced with the word chicken. And so it's like chicken, 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 right. With the intonation. And it's not, it's not a game, it's play, but you're pretending to give an academic presentation in this fun way, right? And it's it, it's it's play exactly. And I think I think I'm playing right now. I'm playing as a an academic, as a present presenter, as a as a co-conspirator, as all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Sure. If you don't have freedom to play, I I I've worked in contexts where my boss wanted me to teach TOEIC and TOEFL, and I was judged based on the, the student scores. No, like I didn't play any games in that class. Maybe some form ups, right? But everything was very by the book, lecturing, drilling, that kind of stuff. 
All right. Let's see. So that's an important distinction between games and playfulness. Yeah, for sure. All right. So are we out of time now? <laughs> we can keep going, yeah? OK. Um, oh, yeah, you got about 20 minutes left and some change. Oh, no, no problem. Cool. OK. So I've put together some resources, and I'll just sort of skim through the best bits. Um, uh, so again, like these keywords. So on um, whatever page four, like games, right? Uh, games have a lot of different technologies. A lot of people think about games as just being digital games, but we can play language games, right? Like Shiritori or Karuta or um, uh, 20 questions, playground games, right? There are lots of different games that we can think about. Um, the question that just came up, right? Uh, this idea of play where, yes, we do play games. Play is often gratifying. It's a little bit more free. Maybe the rules and goals aren't as tight, aesthetically pleasing. Um, James, and again, his website's right there. You can think about playful objects like a Lego figure uh really you, you want to play with it right it, it, it tends to afford play right i've got a little lego uh, metal uh, solid snake in my office that i play with during zoom calls or you can be playful right so i can teach academic speaking a speaking class and and be easygoing with my students and 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 design activities where the, I, I can say like okay i want you to give a presentation a two-minute presentation but i only want you to use the word chicken because I want you to practice intonation right now, right? I could do that with just their their text, but if I just said, you know, you know, chicken, 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 it's a very playful way. There's no object; it's just playful you. So, try to be open minded about games and play. Um, I put I just brainstormed a bunch of different ways to think about like different games and play. Um, and if you just I'll just read them, right? Like think of 25 uses for a container. Playing Minecraft cooperatively, asking, playing 20 questions, or I spy, or Pictionary. We could adopt a cloud, right? We could go outside and say, I really like that cloud. Her name is Hermione. Um, and we can sit there, and we could talk about what Hermi Hermione likes and what she needs, and show pictures you know, to our friends. We could play the game of life. We could do choose your own adventure uh, board games or choose your own adventure books. Um, we could have a random act of kindness. Right? We can be kind to people. I think that's a very playful thing. Um, we can be more sarcastic. That's also language play. We could perform a poem, right? A spoken poem and, 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 and bang drums and things like that. We could tell a joke, create a meme. We could role play, again, role play. So for example, like imagine that you are, you've prepared a surprise birthday party and you're inviting someone who's studying for their final exam to that party. What are you gonna say? Role plays are beautiful. We could make a game. We could, this is playfully playing with playful objects, playfully, right? We could make a game. We can keep a diary as a thousand year old vampire. This is a real game, by the way. It's a diary game where you're given prompts and, and, and you're asked about you know, who your first love was and all this kind of stuff. You could keep a diary as a thousand year old vampire. Touch something that's blue. I used to play this with, with uh, four year olds all the time in, 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 at Ekaiwa, right? Touch something blue, touch something round, touch something green. Um, invent a new word. My kids are always inventing new words. They're disgusting, right? Their favorite right now is poothy, which is no good. Um, you could protest something. Protest is a form of play. It creates a new space, right? All these different technologies and, and ways of playing and, and games to play with. Um, I don't really care. There are some people who like dissect these things, you know, ad infinitum. Just think about what your teaching goal is. Is, is your goal to focus on, on language? Then maybe 20 questions is, is the way to go. Or if you want to teach, or when you want people to engage with stories and enjoy reading. Or if you want to teach some people about you know, Western capitalism, right? Game of life. And how much freedom do you have? Um, just, you know, yeah, yeah that's, that's so. Um, Games and play are a lot older than we think that they are. I mean, as humans, we've been playing for thousands of years. We, we play all the time. Um, even as a field, uh, games are nothing new. Since like the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, language teachers have been doing things with games, mostly non-digital games. It's only recently that we've really sort of overhyped 
um, digital games. And so I'd like to just say, let's, let's use all kinds of different things. If you, can, if you can bring a container into your classroom and say, all right, uh, team, 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 can, who can think of the most uses for this container in five minutes? I think that's a beautiful way to start to start a class or to practice relative clauses or, or all these other things. Um, why play games? We are homo ludens. We are people who play um, as babies, as children, as adults, as groups. Games are art, they're culture. If you like books, music, um, photography, art, sculpture, games are just another form of cultural creativity and, and consumption and industry and technology and language. Um, what else is in here? Um, games tend to put things in focus, I think, which is really interesting. Like, because games don't do everything, they simulate things. So if you want people to focus on vocabulary, you're going to use a vocabulary game. Or I can, I can you know, scroll down. This is snakes and ladders. This is focusing on fate, right? And, and control and destiny and, and uh, puritanical ideals, right? What else? Yeah, they're enjoyable. They're motivating. But I think even more than that, I think that they're a really motivating experience that then is a springboard to some really interesting deeper learning stuff. I think Snakes and Ladders is an interesting game. Sure, I, I played it with my two-year-old, my, my, my own children, um, but I also play it with university students because it can be that interesting springboard to talk about other things. There's language in games, right? In, in Snakes and Ladders, uh, it's your turn, one, two, three, four. Oh no, I went down the slide. I read, you read rules and all this kind of stuff. But there's language around games too. Read the rules to Snakes and Ladders sometime, or read the rules to um, Rock Paper Scissors. It's way more complicated than just you know gesturing. Look at the history of it. You know, um, it's called Rock Paper Scissors, Jean Campon, Rochambeau. Where does where does it come from? Um, we can discuss games, and we and there are communities that play games, right? On Twitch, on YouTube, gaming conventions, all sorts of things. Those are some, that, that's games in a nutshell. Any questions? Whoa. Uh, drama, that's awesome, yeah, for sure. Lego's great, like there's something really to be said, like Lego's awesome, right? Use, use Lego. Um, Lego, the, the, corp the company, the corporation does do like workplace training um, and management scenarios with Lego, right? Because you're, you're, you're modeling things, right? And it gets people to play. It gets people to, to role play, right? Where should we sit around the table? What's, what's the next agenda? This sort of stuff. Yep. Cool. Um, I can talk about research. I don't know if we need to or even have time. The only reason I think I talk about research is if people are interested in doing research. Like, if you need to build a CV, if you want to go to grad school, if you want to get tenure, um, then I think the research is interesting to talk about. Does anybody want me to brush through it super quick? And the offer is true. Like, if you want to get tenure, if you want to do, you know, build your CV, mail me, and we can talk about. You know, we're doing a study together, co-writing some papers. Um, I'm happy to do that with you. It's a whole different talk. Okay, not many people are interested in research. Good, that's fine. Um, basically, in a nutshell, research has really focused on the technology, right? So I'm trying to push you away from thinking about games just as digital. Um, and a lot of research is just focusing on uh, the effects of the technology, like it's motivating or it includes language. A lot of research is not focused on teaching. Um, that's it, right? Um, there's something called the hype cycle where people get, in, this is a thing my daughter drew, um, like you get interested in the technology and then as you go up, you get more enamored, you fall in love with the technology and then maybe some people start to see dollar signs and making money off of it. People get a little crazy, but then they realize that there's, maybe the technology doesn't work as well as we thought it did. Maybe there's some, some it's too expensive or it's not as effective and you start to fall into this pit of despair and then hopefully you start to think about it a little bit more I think with games and language teaching, that thinking about needs to be about teaching, right? How to use it in a context, how to uh, talk to students, how to uh, try to integrate the teaching and technology together. 
and that's where you reach this nice state. Maybe it's not as high as you thought it was, right? But it's it's much better than than completely crashing. Research is focused on vocabulary. Um, research is focused on motivation and, and, and enjoyment. Um, but I think that if we just think about motivation and enjoyment, I think we might actually just be punishing students with these games, right? They're used as a treat, or it's another way to control students without opening them up to other uh, broader ideas about what learning is and, and, and what can be enjoyable in teaching and learning, right? Um, yeah, like rather than thinking about do students like games or is there language in games, I want to ask how can teachers help students meaningfully apply their motivations for many things in meaningful work in and outside the classroom, outside the classroom being a big one, right? So a student might be interested in playing 20 questions or a drama game, but there's something that should happen after that game or that activity. Yeah, I can skip that, right? So we can try to normalize games by focusing on pedagogy, by focusing on teaching, by focusing on, on what we can do. There's so much more that we can do. Um, Jeff Kuhn wrote a really nice article about bringing games into classroom practice. He's talking about video games, but it applies to anything. Like, just think about the goal first. Um, I, I think if you, if, you need to, if you need to focus on vocabulary, that's fine. But then number two, how does teaching help you reach that goal? And then number three, how can games and play help you reach that goal? So I think the example before about, about vocabulary, teaching is the first step. Like we can mediate, we can talk with students, we can find out what they're struggling with. We can bring them into the design process and, and empower them to, to take control of their own learning process, right? I think that's more motivating than, hey, you get 10 points for this, right? We were able to, we were able to uh, it's self-determination theory, right? We were able to make decisions for our own life. So whatever, whatever you're going to do with games, think about the goal first, and then how you as a teacher can reach that goal, and then how games and play could help that. If you want to work on this, I'm happy to help. You're going to be a game researcher superstar if you can normalize games and technology and pedagogy. Questions? Comments? Um, yeah, cool, cool. Just blah, blah, blah. Yeah, awesome. Just have a back chat. That's fine. Enjoy. Um, just yell at me if you want to stop. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, we can talk about just talking, right? Like uh, just a really, really quick thread about people talking in language classes. I, I know talk and spoken output is really important. Um, I, I think it's what people see students doing. Um, but I think there's more to it. I mean, and not just for acquisition. I think we can talk for personal development. Um, we can learn something about or with someone else. Um, so I'm trying to push a little bit towards this idea of strong communicative language teaching, where the first language and translating and grammar work and thinking is, is part of the language, that we're using language to think and to do things, not just to um, ask empty questions. To, to other students, right? Like this idea of pair work, all right? Uh, play 20 questions. Oh, good, 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 you talked a lot. Did they play well? Oh, we're gonna get to that. Um, this idea of using games to help students participate. Um, and I think that the purpose of education is to help students participate in society. Uh, there's a huge participation gap right now um, in, in where well, I'm from in America, in Canada, um, in Japan as well, students are struggling with how to participate in, in work or in civics or in communities. They're struggling. And so I think that if we're going to teach students, we should be teaching them to participate. And if we're going to use games, I think it should get to that goal as well. This idea of literacy, um, experiencing something, then discussing it, and then participating. And this is just literacy. Like, um, Probably a lot of you took literature classes where you read a story and then you discuss it with your teacher. And then do you really apply what you've learned? Like, I think a lot of learning stops right about here where those stories do have messages for us as humans and for societies. How could we use, you know, Dickens or um, uh, Matsuo Basho, right? 
to participate in society more effectively. I think we can. Right? So games are really interesting, but we always, I think I, I always want to ask, do games really matter? Is it, are games really going to get us closer to the goal? Maybe, maybe not. I'm going to skip this. Unless you're really, hello, yeah? Yeah, I was going to jump in there. Um, something Please. that I, I found really striking about my education uh, from, I'll, I'll be honest, it's like 25, 30 years ago. Me too. Um, yeah. in, English literature. Uh, Me too. And yeah, and uh, not being able to, or, uh, at that time, be able to articulate why we were studying the things we do. Yep. And um, uh, just as a, an, uh, I'll put it in the chat too, I'm addicted to uh, CBC Ideas which is philosophy, literature, uh, yeah. radio podcast, yep. and all yeah. in the chat. And it's really uh, made me more yeah. aware of the corpus of English language literature yeah. that I wasn't really connecting to. Here, I'll put it yeah, in. totally. Totally. Yeah. yeah, thanks for putting that in the chat, because I, th I think that they should be connected more, right? Like, those, those pieces of literature really do give us hints uh, uh, what how how language helps us as people and how we can use language um, in the world. I've been sort of addicted to the On Being podcast and the mar Marginalia blog, which is the same thing. Like just thinking deeply about language and life. Okay, here here's a there's a link to CBC Ideas podcast. Oh, that's cool. Awesome. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, no, I, I, and I'm and I'm happy to hear. Like, if I can just like, yeah, I wish I had like two more hours, but like. Just to sort of poke a little bit and just to really ask, like, why why are we teaching and 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 why are we using games? Those are big questions. Those are not easy questions. And if you want to talk another time with me, like, I I found some good teachers early on who were willing to ask those questions to me, which steered me towards more humanistic, I think, approaches to using games. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna skip that um, research. It's boring. Um. <laughs> just a quick like pitfall um <laughs> never work harder than your students i think like it's really fun to to do projects with students but i think that in order to make it sustainable i i, I like projects as well i like designing I, I work with students to run like game clubs and, and design contests and play testing and all this kind of stuff but i almost burned out so i think that if you try to keep the mantra of just never work harder than your students and always try to have an authentic purpose to the project it'll help don't use projects as tests. Like um, uh, Yong Zhao at Michigan State now, Oregon, I guess, talks about how a lot of projects, like, oh, let's let's make a menu or let's make a, a guide to the zoo. They're actually a test, right? Like we studied menu vocabulary in the unit. And so now we're going to make a menu and it's basically another a, a, a gamified test, right? Who's the project for? Um, what are students going to apply by doing the project? Um, and in order, so don't start with the experience of the textbook, if you can, right? Start with the participation project. Like, hey, the, the, the local zoo doesn't have an English uh, guide. Wouldn't it be cool to, to, to help them? Well, we can use some translation tools. We can, we can design it ourselves. We can, we can test it on, 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 on the teachers in our school. And then that kicks back to, well, we should look at what other zoos are, you know, have in terms of English guides and oh we should actually go to the zoo things like that i've done lots of lots of projects with my students um if you want to again like at the top of the page there are tons of projects that i've done with students you can jump up there and see all the stuff that i've done they're all there i use projects as students learning roles in society so i ask students oh, that's horrible who they want to be like do you want to be on the left side right do you want to be uh, 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 a, a media specialist? Do you want to be a fan? Do you want to be an eco-warrior or an artist? Well, choose a project that helps you practice that role um, because that's, that's going to close the participation gap. All right. We've got like, what, 10 more minutes, Alex, maybe? Got about a minute and a half. <laughs> all right cool that's great um, no <laughs> yeah whatever um it's all there uh <laughs> so i 
Yeah, I, I've, I've done a bunch with the, the pedagogy of multi-literacies where we, we play games, we discuss games, and then we research ideas that come out of it, and then we participate in society as we like or need to. Um, and this is based on the pedagogy of multi-literacies, the game Tadakoya. So moving from who we are now to who we're going to be, we plan all this stuff out. Um, we choose games purposefully. We, we take a lot of time to discuss it. We analyze things and apply things. If you're interested, take a look at this document later. There are some examples. There's lots of research. If you, if you want to read, probably the best piece of writing in language pedagogy and theory, uh, it's right here on the next two pages. Just um, do more things, right? Like the what can be broader, what we bring into the classroom. We can weave the classroom and, and outside. We can use um, progressive and traditional ways to teach. We can think more about why we want to teach. Once you figure this out, everything falls into place to transform students. We are important. Students are important. Communities are important, right? There's a zine here. This is a one page. I print this off on, a, on an A3 for my students. And students think about who they are now, who they want to be, we play the game, we talk about it. We ask a question, we answer things, we do a project in about, it depends on the class. This could be a two hour workshop or this could be like a, an entire semester. It's, it's there. About different things that you're doing in the class. Like you are a designer, you're a teacher. And so there are different methods that you can use, try to bring in different things, try different experiences, like go for a walk, discuss things with students, like discuss the games with students more. Ask questions and have do, them do research. Like, like uh, how does how, with snakes and ladders? Why does the why is the board ten by ten? Why not twenty by twenty? How about using different types of dice? Use different materials. Again, they're all at the top of the page, and, and mediate. <laughs>